Welcome back. Your time is 3.37. I'm Martin Daubney here on GB News. Rachel Reeves has been told she could plug a £22 billion black hole in the public finances without raising any taxes if she can simply get 2 million people off of benefits and instead into work. And that's according to pr the pro-business charity The Jobs Foundation. And I'm joined now by the senior policy advisor from that foundation, Nick Tyrone, who joins me in the studio. Welcome to the show, Nick. An excellent report. Caught my very early doors this morning. Thank so you. you're saying, quite simply, mm -hmm. 20 billion quid yep. could be wiped off the black hole mm -hmm. without any painful tax rises, simply by getting people back into work. Give us an idea of the scale of the issue now and how big this could get if we don't take action. Sure. Uh, I mean, one of the things is, obviously, going back to Labour, this actually comes from Labour. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a, something that they put forth before the election. Uh, it was around 2 million people. That's, that's their number. Yeah. And it's essentially moving that quantity of people out of welfare and into work. And just to be clear as well, the 20 billion that we're coming up with, that would simply be in terms of the tax that they would pay. That yeah. is even before we calculate, for instance, saving to the Treasury on welfare payments, secondary payments well, in terms of having that many people in the job market and having you know disposable income, et cetera. So actually it could be much bigger than 20 billion. Mm. Um, but the reverse, as you say, is true. If we don't get these people into work, and then actually that grows, that jobless rate grows, that black hole gets bigger, because in every single sense. Yeah, and in terms of the numbers, you, mm. this report proposes to boost employment rates to 80% from 75%, so a 5% yep. uptick doesn't seem like a mm. massive challenge. Of course, it is a massive challenge, because yep. we have a benefits culture, some might say. We certainly have an issue. We certainly have a quantifiable problem that's getting bigger. 2.8 million people today mm. on sickness benefits, just yep. sickness benefits, mm. that could rise to 4.3 million by the end of this parliament if nothing gets done. That's nudging 10% yep. of the entire workforce. We've got a problem. How do we fix it? Where's the mix between carrot and stick? Well, OK, so I think a big one is we need more entrepreneurs in this mm. uh, country. I think one of the things, a big part of the report is it's very much business people telling their stories and telling mm. us what they're up against, uh, the, the issues that they find, all that sort of thing. I think we need to get the right bit, mix of businesses as the good guys, um, getting the training, that sort of thing, up to scratch and things like making the apprenticeship schemes mm. easier to use for business. Um, basically, leaving no wriggle room, if, you, if mm. you like, just making it that much easier. Because the thing about the 5% is it doesn't sound like much, but obviously these will be much harder to employ people just by their very nature, yeah. in terms of people who've been out of the jobs, uh, who haven't had a job in a while, uh, maybe, as you say, they've been on sickness leave, uh, perhaps they don't have the right, their skills are just outdated and they're going to struggle to find a job. Mm. Uh, maybe they come from generational yeah. uh, poverty, so that's a big one. You actually, we found a charity, for instance, called the Ascend Program in Sheffield, which is brilliant. And all it does is it doesn't, it doesn't fix people. Basically, what it does is it gives people who don't have them the basic skills they need to get a right. job. So how do you dress? How do you speak to, uh, to an employer in an interview? All these things that you sort of take for granted, if you come from a certain background, mm. all those things are very... You learn all those things very young yeah. and they come very naturally. To lots of people, they don't. Now, 700 business leaders have backed this. The Jobs mm. Foundation is a pro-business um, directive. However, there is the alternative side of the argument, of course, the, the sort of Lee Anderson side, if you like, and mm. that is stopping benefits, encouraging people back into work. West mm. Street was saying last week, give them a fat jab. You know, <laughs> let's help people back in yeah. with the carrot. What yeah. about the stick? What about saying, OK, if you don't get back into work, we're simply going to stop your benefits? Is that something that's um, addressed in your report or has merit? Uh, I mean, whether it has merit or not, it's not particularly covered in the report. I mean, the report is very much a sort of very pro-business, yeah. very much a sort of... Looking at, for instance, one of the things that was that's really interesting in the report is looking at young entrepreneurs. So people who've just come out of uni and have started their own business, and you realise that we just need a lot more of that. We need a lot more people probably starting their own businesses. Uh, and I, I think, so I, I guess you you might say it's much more carrot than stick. The report mm. is there enough that you're seeing from the the ankle being flashed by the government in the budget coming up this mm. week to encourage that sort of entrepreneurship because we're hearing about increases to NI employers. Yep. That's the precise the sort of people, you're, the risk takers you're talking about, yep. could be getting penalised. Correct. And I think that's one thing that we really have to look out for. Another big one is things like um, 
uh, full workers' rights on day one. Mm. I think people can sometimes, particularly on the left, look at that. It's like, well, what's the problem? You're just giving people, you know, the, the rights they deserve, etc. The problem is it's going to make it much more difficult for employers to take on those riskier hires. And more expensive. And more expensive, but, but, but much riskier. Because the point being is, if, you, if you're thinking about this person going, OK, we're not quite sure, but we can take a chance. Mm. If you're allowed that leeway to take the chance, like we try them for a few weeks, mm. it doesn't work out, we part ways. If you're saying full employment rights on day one, then you make that hire much riskier. Mm. So you make it so much more difficult to take that 5% out of welfare and into work. Full employers' rights, higher national insurance for employers, mm. plus, of course, increasing minimum wage, at, yep. you know, right from the first bat. All these things sound great on paper, mm. but they're expensive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bureaucracy. And as you said, Nick, yep. it can deter in companies from hiring in the most important thing, and that is their human resource. Yep. What are the people saying in the business found that the business arenas that you're mm. in, are they nervous about the, the budget on Thursday? Yeah, it, it's certainly in those areas. I mean, most of the people I spoke to were, you know, goes back months pre-election, actually. But it was all there in terms of what are you thinking about in terms of a Labour government coming in? It was exactly these types of things. You know, they say they sort of want to be pro-business. Well, what's that going to mean in mm. practice? And it's things like, you know, the higher NI workers, you know, the increased workers' rights. It just we need to make it a little bit easier, I think, for businesses to hire people. Mm. They're all getting a bit spooked ahead of this Halloween Eve budget. Thank you very much, Nick Tyrone. Always a pleasure. Thank you for joining me in the studio from the Jobs Foundation. A fantastic report. Check it out online.